A weight weenie is a road bicycle enthusiast who becomes obsessed with subtracting weight from his or her bicycle at all costs, regardless of things such as practicality and safety. A weight weenie will always replace a 100 gram component with a 99 gram component, irrespective of all other factors. That's according to UrbanDictionary.com, and I have to agree with the definition. In this video, I'm going to outline the ultimate hacks and modifications so that you can turn your bike into the ultimate weight weenie machine and make it as lightweight as possible. Quick disclaimer though, this isn't about aero, this isn't about cost, durability, practicality or value. No, this is just about making it as light as possible, no matter the cost. We're going to begin with the frame, it's the natural starting point. And you're going to want a rim brake frame rather than a disc brake frame. I mean, naturally, it's going to be made from carbon fiber too. But the reason why you want a rim brake frame is disc brake frames are typically 50 to 100 grams heavier. This is because the asymmetric forces created by disc brake frames and the forces are higher for disc brakes means that there's extra reinforcement required around the fork and the chainstay on a disc brake frame. This is unnecessary added weight for a weight weenie. Also, once you factor in through axles and disc brake group sets being heavier than rim brake group sets with the hydraulic lines and such the like, you're gonna be adding typically half a kilo to your build. I mean, you can go down the disc brake route if you really want to, but just be aware, you're never gonna be able to call yourself a true weight weenie. Now with that considered, what frames are we looking at? Well, there are plenty of really lightweight carbon frames from around 2014, and you can often pick up some excellent used bargains. I'm talking things like the old Focus's Alco Max with the straight top tube, the Scott Addict, the Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod, or perhaps the ultimate, the uh, Cervelo R5 RCA. Very rare those, but if you can find one, oh, you found a gem. All these frames appeared at a point in time where we kind of reached peak lightweight for bike frames. This was because bike designers weren't trying to make everything aero and just adding weight to make it aero. These bikes, it was all about making it as light as possible. So now we've discussed frames, we're moving on to group sets. The lightest group sets available are SRAM RED ETAP and SRAM RED 22. Mechanical. The SRAM RED cassette. I mean, that's a beautiful object too. It's really light, machined out of a single piece of titanium. Amazing. But there are even lighter cassettes out there. Some really exotic ones made from really lightweight, exotic alloys if you're prepared to get them. Just be aware, they won't be as durable as something made by SRAM, Shimano or Campagnolo, but come on, <laughs> you don't care about that. You're a weight weenie. Also, if you are building the ultimate weight weenie build, you should seriously consider running one by as your drivetrain. This will mean that, well, you only need one shifter, one chain ring, and uh, well, no front mech. Plus, potentially, you lose some cabling and some cable housing as well. This all adds up, it's all weight. And to do this, technically, you should use a one by compatible rear mech, such as SRAM RED Access. But you can kind of bodge it with an, a normal rear mech as well. As for that single chain ring that you're gonna be running, well, it can only be made from one thing. As a weight weenie, your favorite material is carbon. Every day, you must wake up, stand in front of the mirror, and say, I am a weight weenie, and my favorite material is carbon. That's what, that's what I do. I mean, sure, the material properties of alloys are far better to certain applications, such as chain rings, but the carbon one, it's lighter. When it comes to brakes, standard calipers from the major brands, they ain't gonna cut it. You're gonna need something far more exotic than that. I'm talking THM fibulas or EE Cycle Works brakes. Yeah, they're really expensive, but they're also really, really light. Plus, why not consider buying just one? I mean, you only need 
like one one brake, like a front brake. I mean, that, who needs two brakes? And that is, of course, unless the the sort of highway laws, the road safety laws where you live, stipulate that you have to have two working brakes on, on, on your bike, in which case you will you will need to. Handlebars. You should seriously consider not using drop bars, but instead bullhorn bars, and then put time trial style brake levers into the ends of those bullhorn bars. This will be much lighter than a standard uh, shifter with a hood, slightly less ergonomic, slightly less comfortable on the, on the hand, but who cares about that? We're bothered about weight. You could also consider putting blip shifters, SRAM blip shifters in the shifter as well, um, if you're running a SRAM wireless group set. I mean, that would be really cool, a really lightweight way of changing gear. And while we're on the subject of the cockpit, you're gonna be running as short a stem as possible. Shorter means lighter. I mean, it might not fit you, but it's gonna be lighter and the narrowest bars possible. I'm talking like 36 centimeters wide. It's like, you know, narrower bars, like five grams per cent, five grams per centimeter lighter. That's a conservative estimate. And while on the subject of contact points, for your bike, your bar stem and saddle, they're gonna have to be made from carbon, but not just any old carbon, super amazing German carbon. We're talking decadent brands like Lightweight, Tune, AX Lightness. These components, they're not gonna come cheap. I mean, combined, they're gonna cost more than all of your friends' bikes. Once you've blown your paycheck on these, you're gonna be eating out of bins for the next three months, but it's gonna be totally worth it. Just Think of how cool it's gonna look when you post the picture of your bike on Instagram. And your saddle of choice, it shouldn't be comfortable. If you're thinking it's gonna be comfortable, you've clearly not been paying attention. No, nope, it's gonna be like sitting on a medieval torture device. It may reduce your ability to conceive, but I mean, who needs kids? Plus kids cost money, and that money can be spent on lightweight bike parts. Who needs kids anyway? And if you're on a budget, well, you can just take your existing saddle, get a sharp object, hack all the padding off, get a drill, drill a load of holes in it. That'll save a load of weight. My favorite way to reduce weight from a bike is to take off the paint. Paint, primer, and lacquer, it weighs a surprising amount, typically around 200 to 300 grams. Sometimes it's even more. Now there are a number of ways you can go about removing your paint. You can do it yourself. Just sit on the sofa in front of the TV with some wet and dry paper rubbing away. Just be careful not to go too far and, and through the, the carbon fiber itself. You, you, don't, you don't wanna do that. But if you don't wanna do it yourself, well, your other option is you can get someone else to do it, a professional, someone like Ali from Fat Creations. He routinely takes off the paint on frames before repainting them. But, you know, you, you don't need him to, to paint it after, just, just take the paint off for you. I mean, you'll have to pay him, but he'll be worth it. A bike needs wheels and tires. And there are a lot of lightweight options out there. Once again, we're looking at AX Lightness, lightweight, but also Coroma makes some really light hoops as well. And these are gonna have to be tubulars. Tubular tires, they weigh a lot less than clinchers. Yes, they're less practical, but being sensible, that's gonna cost you at least 200 grams. Before you go and put any old tubular tires on your wheels, don't. The difference between the lightest and the heaviest tubular tires is astonishing. If you wanna call yourself a true weight weenie, which, which obviously you do, you're gonna have to go down the indoor velodrome specific tire. I'm talking something like a Vittoria Pista, super low rolling resistance, super fast, tan sidewalls, but most importantly of all, weigh just 140 grams. I mean, sure, out on the road, it's gonna be easier to poke holes in these tires than the plot of Toy Story. I mean, if Buzz Lightyear does not believe himself to be a toy, and in fact, a real space ranger, why does he still freeze around humans? Hmm. I digress, but you get the point. We mustn't forget pedals, and there was a company called Ultra Light Sports that made what were said to be the lightest pedals available. They were essentially a peg that you could slot your shoe 
onto. Steve, who made his ultralight 4.28 kilogram Cannondale, had them on his bike, but I'm not sure they're still available and I haven't been able to find them online. So they might not still be around, but not to worry, because you can still get the Time Espresso 15s, which are ridiculously light, just 66 grams a pedal. <sighs> If you're going to progress to the higher echelons of the weight weenie fraternity, then you're gonna need to become a master of the dark art of drillium. I'm talking about the process of removing unnecessary material from your bike. You're gonna need to own a Dremel and know how to use it. Any unnecessary material needs to be removed, my friend. Also, drops, I mean, the drops on your handlebars, who needs drops anyway? <laughs> What do they do? <laughs> on a way to becoming a weight weenie grandmaster, Manon recently practiced the dark art of drillium on a chain set, removing excess material. Good work, Manon. Well done. We also visited Steve, and Steve also displayed excellent drillium skills when removing excess material with a Dremel from the shifters on his super lightweight hyperbike build. Be more like Steve and Manon. Now we've covered all the, the major bases, we need to talk finishing touches. Obviously, you're going to go with titanium bolts throughout. This will save you about two grams across the entirety of your bike. It's not much, but you've come so far. Think of the savings. And sure, these titanium bolts possess all the material properties of cheese. They'll round out the first time you use them. But we've already established you're a weight weenie and you own a Dremel. Just drill them out if they round out. I mean, no problemo. Cables and cable housings too. Not all cable housings are equal, my friends. Oh no. Brands like Jaguar make super light ones that are significantly lighter than, well, the standard ones that you'd get. We're talking savings of around 20 grams or so. Add them to your shopping list. That's quite a lot, isn't it? And make sure that while we're on the subject of cables, you cut them to the minimum length possible. Obviously, this will, you know, make adjusting your gears and derailleurs nigh on impossible. But think of the savings by doing that. You're going to save at least a gram. Have you ever considered how much grease and lube weighs? If you haven't, then you've got much to learn, my young Padawan. You can forget about lubrication. Sure, your bearings, they're not gonna last much more than one ride. But this, this journey has never been about durability. Oh, oh, and don't forget about your brake blocks as well. Make sure that you sand them down on a belt sander to at least two thirds worn before installing them. That'll save at least a gram per block. So there you have it. Follow all these tips and you're guaranteed to have a bike that weighs around three kilograms and a, a much lighter wallet as well. And once you've done that, submit your bike to the Bike Vault and you, well, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a super nice. It doesn't end there either. Let us know down in the comments what weight weenie tips and advice that we've forgotten to put in this video as uh, I'm sure everyone will want to find out. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.